genuinely thought you and Jake were in it for the long haul. Mm. And then when would you say, like, the crack started to show, like... Gut kept screaming at me, like, lib, lib, like, it's not right. Did your brain go, it's Jake? Hey guys, welcome back to Not Always a Princess with me, Lauren. I do just want to say a massive thank you to the brand that I've made this happen, who have sponsored Not Always a Princess, which is Swan, and they are just amazing. I do have a discount code for Swan, which is Lauren S20. I actually got my air fryer with that discount code and got an absolute bargain. So if you want to get yourself anything for your kitchen, anything funky on the Swan website, it is www.swan-brand.co.uk and don't forget to use my discount code. And just a massive thank you to Swan for making this happen and for setting up this groovy set because I just love it. Hi. Hi. Um, guys, welcome back to Not Always a Princess. You may notice something a little bit different. We are on a brand new set. It I, is... I am obsessed. Yeah. The set. It's, it's very... Be... I feel like I'm in a chick flick comedy right now. Yes. Yeah. And I think we fit that vibe. We, we fit do. that vibe. So... so um, I'm Groovy Chick. I'm Groovy Chick. What and would you like me? Um, do you know, you were giving me 13 going on 30 vibes with the hair. <gasps> 80s. Guess my favourite. But when they're 13, back. not 30. <laughs> Like, you went there, you get there, but we're not there yet. <laughs> seven years, yeah. seven years. Yeah. Um, so if you don't know, we have Liberty Pool as a guest today. Hi, guys. I'm trying to act really cool, but I am I, all day, all morning, been massively fat and girly. <laughs> when you messaged me and the blue tip came through, I was like, he's here. <laughs> Need to my beer. <laughs> <laughs> but you're so down to earth. You've Aww. made me feel so comfortable already. So I'm going to start from the very beginning, because you've not always been a Love Islander. No. What were you before that? What was your vibe there? Yeah, so I was a waitress for like five years at Nando's and I also did a month. We were talking about Nando's. I didn't know you were a waitress yeah. there. Yeah, for okay. five years. And then I was also doing a marketing degree at the time. But um, I'm actually like, well, I was a bit of a buffin at school. So I got what? a buffin. Do you not know what I a buffin is? I have never heard that. Shut so You don't know buffin? Buffin? Look a bit like, like nerdy. And I, was, <laughs> I was like... Yeah, no. Is that Birmingham slang? Is it? it is. I thought you guys heard boffin. No, everyone's like, no. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> someone that was over there. Oh. Yeah, so I was like, I was just like, was like into subjects and that. And I got like nine no, eyes, nice no, star. Did you? Yeah, and I was like pupil of the year at school and everything, which oh, I guess was it have head girl, but it would have been the equivalent of like head girl, like pupil of the year. Oh, wow. I don't know why they go for that. No. I was to do it. <laughs> And then, yeah, so I just wanted to be a doctor. And then I took science at eye level, but I just lost the passion for it. Because although I've got, like, this academic side, I've also got this, like, bubbly, big creative side. Creative side. Yeah. So it just wasn't fulfilling me. And then I was doing my marketing degree for two years. And I, and the way it just... But, by the way, I'm literally the most clumsy person ever. Oh, and the well, at least person. it's just Nando's, though. I feel well, like they always can... stuck me on door because they didn't trust me to actually, like... Oh cook or anything yeah, like that. I get so, your stars, huh? Yeah, I, get stars. I was just literally on door <laughs> the whole time. And then two years into my degree, then I got like um, a message saying, would you be interested? I'm going on Love Island. So you got scouted then? You didn't apply? Not by Love Island themselves, by an agency at the time. So they messaged me and was like, would you be interested in going on Love Island? And then I was like, you know what? Like I come out of like, a long-term relationship at the time. Well, it wasn't really, a, it was how long? Three years, but it was very on and off. Like, it was three years, but technically it was probably together one and a half years. <laughs> was, he a three fuck, years. was he a fuck boy? He was just too young. It was, oh, it, we both, too, yeah, we were just too young. And then, um, obviously, yeah, I went through the audition process and then got chose to be an original, which I was happy about because yes. me, I don't really like, like, I'm so like girl's girl, probably to like the extreme. Mm -hmm that I just didn't feel right going in there and taking someone's man. Would you have been a Casa Amor girl or would you have only gone on if you were original? Well, I, they actually said, like, what would you prefer? And I did say original because, like, I just couldn't imagine going in and, and see. It. Or, or if I did, obviously I'd go through a conversation with them. I'm, I'm not the kind of girl to do anything behind someone's back. I'm very upfront like that. Yeah, I don't think you can make so, a connection in such a sort of show. At the time. Yeah. The Casa Amor is like, if you're being put into the villa, at least you can have them conversations. In Castle Mall, you are literally doing it behind the girl's back. Yeah. And you have watched so she already know what's going on. So it just wouldn't have felt right to me to do that. So and I your Castle that. Mall was dramatic. It must. was dramatic. It's probably, I would say, up there was the most. Yeah. That and the uh, the Molly May year was quite bad as well. Yeah. Uh, with the Michael situation. But that, yours was the first year where they did the whole, um, have you got anything you want to say? Oh. Because they keep doing that every year now. I do. 
You guys set but us I don't up think for that. Had quite the same impact. How how must it feel being one of them girls that's just stood there like not being picked? That's what I couldn't deal with. Yeah, I know it is. It is sad, and like I think you know, a lot of Casa girls get hired, but we're all we're just given like the cards that you dealt with. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? And yeah, everyone tries to make the best of the situation, I suppose, at the time. And they're going in there for that purpose. They yeah. have to do that. Yeah, by the producer, exactly. Love Island, like. exactly. And they're like, there's just normal, lovely girls like. I got on out with like Lily from that season and she was always when I come she's out so she's so nice. nice and she was always out like supporting my stuff like she was always at my events supporting me and everything like that I think and she I got say, it really bad with I the was, comparison thing I know I would say Lily for me was a was a girl's girl like she yeah, is a girl's girl I think it's just the car she got dealt with at the time yeah no. yeah not good what? What was the audition process like? Is it really scary? Because you come across really confident, so I don't feel like it'd have been an issue for you. I think they just spoke to me and thought, this girl is an absolute nutter. Let's get her on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like my interview wasn't normal. No. no. Literally saying, like, what's your party trick? And what is your party trick? Oh. Please, please show us. All I can fair in stores really big. No. Like, abnormal <laughs> today. No, no. Party trick. I don't know, but they, they liked it. And can I see? Oh God, here we go. Here we go. I don't know why I'm making the premises for the bar. <laughs> I want to see. <laughs> yeah, it's not. Oh, wow. Yeah, they're really, but I can't breathe out of them still. Mine is, mm-hmm. I can flip my eyelids inside out. Oh no. But not with lashes on. Oh no, they're like, <laughs> not going to do that yeah. today. <laughs> <laughs> so I bet they loved that. Yeah, they just loved it. I think after that, they were sold. They were like, we've got to get this girl in. You know, I think it just showed that I weren't a fight. Did you have to do, like, the video, then go down? The, like, what's the process? Yeah, so I did a video. So I had, like, my periometer stuck to my wardrobe because I was there. I was an Ando's actress and had, like, <laughs> my old spicy. Yeah, extra. <laughs> so I was like, oh, my patch it's a bit extra more, but I'm looking for, like, extra, extra more classy <laughs> guy to sweep me off my plate. It's very cringe. No, you've got well, to. It was outside the box and they loved it. Yeah. And Anton said that he does one about chocolate bars and he got on. Yeah. So I was like, I think they're just looking at the personality. Out of the box and personality. Yeah. Sense. So were you during COVID times or not? Yeah. Literally, it was the first season after COVID. So I think they didn't have one during COVID and then we was the first one after. So because of that, there was a lot of precautions and stuff like, yeah, like obviously I think we had to quarantine for two weeks and with one person is it i've heard yeah. that yeah yeah for two weeks and we had to just make sure that you know like there was so because i think people said before you could go out the villa and get your nails done and that but we had none of that i was like sticking nails on and it, it's not a vibe yeah in the villa like <gasps> with your and oh my gosh and they turned my hair pink after the second challenge so like had to one of the challenges yeah so they had to quarantine these hairdressers to come out and then, not like, literally, I had two hours to go outside, do my cabin hair. Like, I was in this mini... Because it was their fault. Oh. Yeah, that quickly swapping the hair extensions out and then go back in. But like, I think I, sh- I would have just rather kept the ones I had in and just maybe styled out the pink hair because it mean, weren't the yeah, same. I feel like you'd soup. Yeah. yeah that I had a brooch at the moment. The day I went, like, bright red, I put on like, this whole leather suit and just felt like Avril Lavigne. She, I love her, by the way. Oh, I love Avril Lavigne. Lavigne. She's very chick flicker. She hey, is. Hey, you, you. Yeah. I'm like a girl. Yeah, yeah. Big <laughs> house for it. That is my thing. Yeah. Um, so, with your time on Love Island, like, are, are you glad you did it? Is it something you would recommend other people do? Like, what's your vibe with it? Yeah, for me, I think I'm a big believer in, like, everything happens for a reason. Mm-hmm. And I think I genuinely went in there to find someone. Did you genuinely, genuinely hand on heart do that? Yeah, honestly, I did. I know some people are open about it. Yeah, you go in for the experience and stuff. But I think because you don't know whether it's going to happen or not. But because I had one relationship at the time that wasn't very good, I was looking for love and I was open to love. So I went in and then obviously like I hit it off with Jake straight away. Like, if his name starts with G, better stay the hell away. <laughs> <laughs> I had that name on with Jason. No, no don't right avoid that. it. <laughs> but yeah, um, and then we just hit it off like on a banter level. And that's something that I struggled to do like with my ex-partner. Like it was very awkward because of everything that happened. So like when I hit it off with him on a banter level, like, I just... I was like, oh my God, he must be the one. My friends take the mick out of me. So basically, every time I start dating someone new, I'll say the exact same line every time. And it'll always be, I've never had a connection like this with anyone oh, before. No. And <laughs> every single time. So they just take the mick out of me. But that is something down. that people say on Love Island. That is a Love it Island is. line. It is. Did you say that before you went on? Yes. Yes, I've always said that. Yeah. That is, that is confident. <laughs> 
that, if I said that to a guy, I'd never hear from them again. I know. And now, now, obviously, I know that although we had the banter, like the depth between us wasn't there, which is why it didn't work out. Do you know what? At first, like, I feel like people that get on it at the beginning, they go to the end, they win. It's usually that kind of pattern. And I genuinely thought you and Jake were in it for the long haul. Mm. And then when would you say, like, the crack started to show, like, yeah, because it's hard to to see that being on the show, whereas as an audience yeah. we could see. I think there was red flags all the way through. Mm -hmm. But what I always say to people is, I feel like in there, I had the whole like falling in love, marriage, divorce, all crammed into eight weeks. So you go through your honeymoon phase where there's red flags, but you overlook the red flags, mm -hmm. and then you're in a you're in a relationship, and then you start to leave your honeymoon phase, and you start to realise, okay actually maybe we're not as compatible as I thought and then it comes to the decision then like you married like <laughs> I'll just say like you married and it comes to the decision like right are we gonna get this for a divorce or am I gonna get divorced and get the hell out of this yeah I, yeah for me what just happened is like, I just didn't think there was enough there like like for me to I just wasn't happy the, the, the very energy. juicy season because was the movie thing was the first on your season as well. Yeah, so the movie thing was the first on my season. And I think I always spent a long time figuring out, because I only had one relationship before, do I feel this way because of a bit of PTSD from the past? Yeah. Or do I feel this way because of actually what's going on in front of me? And my gut kept screaming at me like, lib, lib, like, it's not right, it's not right. Do you want so to, to follow my gut? Just be, like, is there an element of being on the show and just wanting it to work kind of thing? I wanted to stick through it because I thought we had something good. Yeah. So that's why I wanted to stick through it at first. And also in my head at the time, I was dealing with my own emotions. So I was looking at what was going on in front of me and I was like, am I feeling this way because of like, me? I thought it was me. Like I blame myself at the time in terms of, I thought I'm feeling like this because I'm overthinking because I can be an overthinker and yeah. I'm analyzing everything like I usually do. And but on the show, from an audience point of view, nothing changed with you. Nothing. Mm. You were the same from the beginning, all the way from yeah. the left. Yeah. And I don't know personally from an audience point of view, other than Casa Amor, and I don't know what, what happened with you. So it wasn't. Yeah. Anything. It was. I think I was starting to see a lot of things that for me was just weren't weren't for me. Do you and think you had a game plan from the beginning. Do you think it was a beginning thing, or do you think it was was halfway? Through? Despite what people say, I do think Jake did like me at the start, but I think being in an intense environment it can get in people's heads so yeah. and for me I wasn't thinking calculated at all like I wasn't I was just there being me yeah. enjoying my experience I wasn't thinking about how what's going to make me look best come across best on tv yeah look I wasn't thinking like that at all and when I started to see like little things so that for me personally when I did not for me I just thought nah like we're not we're not the same I thought I started the journey thinking that we were very much the same person, but left realizing that we were very much actually different people. And that's no bad blood against him. Like I wish him the best. Mm -hmm. Nothing, you know, no bad blood against him. But like my thing is, we were very much the same on the surface level, banter and yeah. all that. But I've got so much like like depth. I love deep chats and yeah. and like. I just don't think we had that together. Do you not have a connection at all now? Do you, are you friends? Are you? I don't speak to him. No, I, I was quite happy to be like civil for the rest of the time. Yeah. Obviously, he decided to unfollow me, which if it's fine, if he needed to do that, oh. to take the time to get over me. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. We'll roll with that. No. We'll roll with that one. I love that. <laughs> That's why you did it, hon. <laughs> no, I, lo I loved your journey on Love Island. It was one of my favourites. And I can tell you were genuine because... Your Love Island experience just didn't go the way you planned. No. It and that's didn't. how we know you were genuine. Yeah. Like, you didn't even get kicked out. You just left. Yeah. Was that a horrible decision to make? It was, but I thought because I've put up with so much stuff in the past, I thought I'll be damned if I'm doing this again. And also, I was actually thinking about him as well as I'd done it for myself because he said to me, like, he'd had people meet his parents before and then ended things. And I thought the way we are and how off the energy is right now, I always don't want to meet your parents knowing that I'm not 100% oh, about you. Yeah. Exactly. No, and I knew that was coming up because obviously I've watched the show before. I knew yeah. it was coming up. So in my mind, I was thinking, oh, I don't want to meet your parents and act like everything's normal and go on our final date and act like it's the best thing ever when the energy had been off for at least like a couple of weeks at that point. Obviously, I was just figuring out in my head, but I thought I'm not going to act here. 
Yeah. So yeah, I just laugh. So do you feel like your Love Island experience is like a growth thing? Hundred percent. Yeah. For me, and that's, that's why you're glad you've. Yeah, done. yeah. Although like it was, it's a show. Like for me, that was the first time in my life that I'd ever walked away and been like, no, like I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna stand for this. And then since then, I've pretty much like been through the same thing. So I've act- I've lost a lot of friends. Yeah, a lot. by walking away, and no one's well, best for you. Yeah, because I just think it's so important. Not I'm always such a given person and put everyone else's feelings around me, but I think when it comes to it, like you do have to put yourself first. And if you're feeling drained, I always say, be who you are as a person. And if someone adds to your life, then great. Love that. But if they're not adding to your life and they're just draining, like there's no point of having them around you. So I've had to make very difficult decisions to put myself first. I love that. Yeah. yeah. So do you so you feel like before Love Island you weren't like that? I think before Love Island, I've always been like the same outgoing, bubbly person. But I do think I was a bit of a walkover. Whereas now I think I do stand my ground a lot more and I do put myself first. You've learned a lot from Love Island. So what is like your number one piece of advice that you would recommend to anybody thinking of applying for the show? Would you recommend it as well? Yeah, I always say I just trust your gut instincts in there because what I found difficult when I was in there was, all right, are people saying this to me because they generally care about me or are people saying this to me because it benefits them and their game plan and stuff? Yeah. Because not everyone in there is in there for genuine reasons. Nope. So I think just make sure you trust your gut and, yeah, always stay true to yourself. Like, at the end of the day, just always go with what you feel is right. And you went on Love Island and came out with a best, best friend. Yes, I did. You and Kaz are, like, BFFs for life. Yeah, we did. Yeah. And like I said, like, although I didn't have, you know, leave with a boyfriend, I found with the best, like, left with the best mate. And we're still friends now. And got a little podcast thing yeah, together. Yeah, and she's just such, like, she's like me. Like, she's just got amazing energy. We just bounce off each other and... Yeah, we've been like she's been in my support system a little bit as well coming out. So it's just nice that. to have her. Yeah. Was it hard coming out of Love Island? What is that like? Because to yeah. me, it must be so overwhelming. We were chatting a little bit about it earlier, of how there's there's actually so many Love Islanders. Mm-hmm. And it's it's that thing of make it or don't make it or who's doing better. Is there that element to it? Yeah, I'd say so. I think I don't know, like when I come out and stuff, I think I did do quite well. And a few comments were made to me, like your storyline helped you. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. I didn't want to be in that like, situation. Yeah, like, listen, like, I'm me. So people do, I think, try and take away from that. And I was like, I I did what felt right to me. Like did... How many roughly, like, followers did you have before going in? Probably, like, 5,000. And you've gone to well, a million? Well, yeah, like, over a million. And I think, for me, like, because I'd never done influencing before or, or anything like that, and then you literally go from, like, on my situation, I went from, like, doing waitressing or what I was doing to then coming out all these amazing opportunities on the table like brand deals and another shot do you come out and it's like you hit in the face with brand deals yeah I was I was the busiest as I've ever been in my whole life like I was so like I was run down I was constantly doing something I didn't have days off and I think you when you're doing so much you don't for me and I was just getting my head around that I didn't think like okay what do I want to do with my platform and stuff? Whereas it's like now I've got a bit more time to be like, right, this is the route I want to go down. I don't want to, anyone to ever look at my platform and be like, I want to be like her and aspiration. I want people to come on and, and be like, this is a safe place and this is what I want to do, which is why now I do a lot of body positivity stuff because I want girls to be able to relate to me, not think, oh, I wish I had a life. And I think that comes from when I when I was before on, on Love Island. I didn't realise how bad I edited my pictures. Oh, it's so easy to fall into that. And oh. I didn't realise when I look back and I think, oh my gosh, like that didn't even... My advice to either. people, don't download the app that you can edit with. Because yeah. the minute you do, like I've done it where I've edited my jaw once, and I mean like once or twice on like the mm. Facetune app, you are in a rabbit hole. You you then, it's like with filters. Your body's just small. Yeah, you can't, like, can't yeah. see yourself pretty naturally. Like you're like, oh my God, look at that mark and look at... It's yeah. weird, like filters are shocking as well. Mm. Like they make you blurred and it is it is mental. And I think as well because I used to compare myself to the girl that got cheated on every day. And like literally I sat every day and I used to look on the Instagram and it, it was constant like mental torture. Yeah. So I don't ever want a girl to come on and think, Oh, am I as pretty or is my life as good? Like, I want people just to come and feel safe place and that like, inspires and like I'm gonna do this today, I'm gonna do that today. So like that was a big thing for me now that I'm trying to do. But don't get me wrong, 
I was a bit lost when I come out. It's yeah. me yeah, to find what I want to do and, and my balance. Like, yeah. I was like, like you do think, oh, should I be doing these like amazing fashion posts? And sh am I meant to be looking aesthetic? And yeah, or I'm many people are from it. I have so I get aesthetic. No. It, like, no, I couldn't be like a, a Molly May if I tried. Like, yeah. she's so good at it, and she's I amazing. She's talent, yeah, she's actual talent. Because yeah. I wake up, so like that you see the vlogs on TikTok where they're like, wake up with me, and I'm like. You've set your tripod up to get out of bed and like get. How do you I know do what you're on about. The ones where they're like oh, video themselves and putting the pillows. Like, oh no! I, did you get out of bed no. to set up your tripod to click play? Oh, no. And then get out of bed. I'm like, I can't I'll do that. The last, but egg your economy catch up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I actually have. Like, I just can't. I just literally can't. I can't be aesthetic. You actually are so real in person as well. Yeah, like, this isn't a facade. Like, no, no. So so this is me. I am this is me. Yeah, I am a bit of a catastrophe when it comes to I love that though. Yeah. I just naturally mess in. I'm a mess. I'm a hot mess. I'm a hot mess. I'm going with that one. Yes, yeah. That's the case. Um so that's your that's your vibe now. That's yes. where you're going with. Yeah. Obviously I do like I'm still young and I do like to post, you know, the nice post of me looking good. So like I'm twenty three. But yeah, look, I'm trying to get a lot more inspirational messages behind it because I want people to, yeah. Why do you think some Love Islanders, um, I see it with a few of them, like almost pretend they've not been on the show. What do you think that is? Like some of them really dis like distance themselves from ever being on it. Um, I think people just do what's right for them. Yeah. For me, like personally, Love Islanders come with so many amazing opportunities. And I think once you find your passion... And like obviously I'd never forget my roots and never forget where I come from. But once you find your passion, you're quite happy just doing that. So like I think some people have just gone off and, and done their passion. Like, I mean, I would love to go abroad and, and, and live. And sometimes I'm like, you know, because I love chatting and I love doing stuff like radio and, and TV and that's proper up my street. But sometimes I'm like, do I follow my dream now or, or do I just you know, okay, go. go and do white. She's not a yacht in the Bahamas. Because I've got, I like to, I've, got, got, I've like. got a travel bug in me. So I'm very much, same. I am a massive travel bug. I'm not really holding on to my public image. It's like, I just want to do something I enjoy. You only live life once. You've got to do whatever makes you happy. 100. And I love that. Okay, so we've got a game for you. A little bit like the James Corden game where he'll basically ask them quite a, a crazy question, a juicy question. We love the drama. Yeah. And if you can't answer it, you you have to have a fourth there. I have to. Have to. Yeah. Like, have to. We've so got is this like baby food, blue cheese, bit of sardines yeah. for you. You know what I feel like? I feel like I'm on I'm a celeb. You know when they give you the nice option? Yeah. And then the horrible option. You've got the cake. And there's like the cakes there and the sweet and the sweets. And I'm looking at that thinking, wow. If you answer the majority of the questions, you can have a cupcake. You promise me that. I'm always not that cupcake after. So you don't actually have to eat any of that disgusting food. If you answer the question, <laughs> but they are juicy. <laughs> are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Game face. Would you do Love Island again? We'll start easy. Would I do Love Island again? Like Adam Collard vibes. Yeah, you know what? I would do it. And reason being, I just think it was a once in a lifetime experience. And yeah, I had my ups and downs, but it was just amazing. Like meeting so many different people from different walks. I think that's refreshing. I really do. Some people really go, oh, it's not, it wasn't for me. Like, yeah. No, I appreciate it. Yeah, I, I appreciate my experience and yeah. I like it. Maybe I'll find love. Okay. <laughs> so without mentioning Kaz, who was your favourite Islander from the season, other than Kaz, because that's cheating. <laughs> okay. Other than Kaz, my season. Yeah. Oh, it's so you hard. Can your season and another season. Yeah, it's it's so hard to. Oh, what? Oh, both as in. Yeah. Like, it is so hard to choose because I've got a lot of love for all the, the girls and boys and that. Mind you, I don't speak to the boys as much as the girls. No. I'll probably say Faye. Bay. Yeah, for yeah. me because I think she was just like an older sister for me in that. And she was very real. She was very. No, real. no, no filter. Said it how it was. But yeah, I think she did. She did save my hair once from being stuck in a hairbrush, and she was like, "She, we, we're opposites. <laughs> we're very opposite in some respects." But I think, yeah, we just wanted the best for Please each other. In contact with Faye now. Yeah, yeah, I'm going on holiday with the girls nice. next. I think in a couple of weeks to Greece. Right. To Greece, Mama Crete. Woman. Yeah, me, Faye, Kaz, Sharon, and Abby. I love that. Yeah. Um. So, any favorite Islander from another season? Oh, you've got a side Chris and Kevin, yeah. Yes. That was great entertainment. Yes. I think as a duo, 
I don't no, think we've had a bromance like that since. We haven't had a bromance since that. Nah, nah. And I think like me and Kaz were seen as like the cis pants as well. Love that. Nice, cis yeah. pants. Cis pants. Of made up word you've just called Yeah, it. we're going with it. We're going with <laughs> we're it. We're going with it. Yeah. Um, okay, so we're getting juicy now. Go. Oh. The least, not mentioning Jake, the least favourite Love Islander from your season. Not mentioning Jake. If you're enjoying the Not Always a Princess podcast, First of all, thank you. But second of all, come and follow us on Instagram, subscribe on YouTube, follow us on TikTok. On the Instagram, we'll be posting lots of behind the scenes, sneak previews of guests, get ready with me's, chip flick quizzes. And I want to kind of build a little bit of a community on there where we do lots of 90s chip flick stuff. I love my quizzes, as you all know. I started them in lockdown and I've moved them over to the podcast. So um, if you love stuff like that, yeah, make sure you come and follow the Instagram. And I hope you're enjoying <laughs> Or there's blue cheese up for grabs. It's completely up to you. <laughs> I'm sure I'm like that. <laughs> you know what it is? I don't, I don't feel like all oh, because I this because I'll generally get on with everyone. Okay. But there's no one that Least I... Least favourite Love Islander from another season, maybe, darling. Oh. I'm just trying to think. Now he's been in Love Islanders. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm trying to think. The baby food. Have you had a bad experience with another Love Islander? Gem, everyone I've met is smiling because she knows. I know <laughs> the blue cheese is coming. <laughs> I'm basically what I'm trying to do is procrastinate yeah. the blue cheese as much as I can. <laughs> are you answering or are you not answering, <laughs> Liberty Pool? I can't answer. <gasps> I don't think I can answer. I'm going to be nice. I'm going to let you choose. You can either have baby food, blue cheese, or sardines. It's up to you. This is the only time that I'm going to ever be able to try my shots with everyone eyes in a baby jar. <laughs> Unless I like it, I'll be able to the booth after this. Don't show the branding, what you're not hunt, no, copyright no, and all I that. Just, I can't ever open it. Sit here. No, this is like me. I'm the trying to <laughs> I just try to open my drink. I can't actually ever open it. Oh, oh there we go. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. That was really easy. I'm going to aeroplane this to you. What, okay, you ready? Come close, come close, oh. darling. Ooh, a metal gold spoon. Oh, that looks disgusting. Ready? Open wide, darling. Darling. <laughs> oh, my God. Watch the cream sofa. Uh, what, can you get some spaghetti in there, Liz? I like pasta with She's pasta. She's being a bit fussy with the bit of food, guys. <laughs> oh, that was just quite uh, a That a is a ridiculous amount. I don't know. Oh, right. It's heaps. <laughs> oh, I'm going to do. Okay. <laughs> Swallow it or you're answering the question. <laughs> oh no. Oh, she's gone a farm. Oh. <laughs> I can't I can't. I'm the only ninja matter, yeah, but where's the salt? <laughs> where's the salt? Where is the salt, guys? That is disgusting. If I'm having a baby, I'm not feeding them that. That's a feature. <laughs> Feed them the real one. Do not that boy that. No. Ditch <laughs> them. Right. Okay. We've we've had a we've had one question unanswered. Mm. Right. Okay. If you could couple up with an islander from another season, who would you have coupled up with? Who do you wish was in your season to couple up with? The guy that went out with Mora is a bit of me. Is he called Chris? He is so... What, Chris? He's cute. funny. He's funny. He's sexy. Yeah, he is. Oh, oh I've got spaghetti bolognese on I'd there. probably say, personality-wise... Or a bit of Chris, actually. Mm, personality-wise, me and Kem, so... <gasps> but, yes. but, 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 I would never go out with Kem because he's dated my friend. Has he? Yeah, oh, so that's no. a no. You really and I was, yeah, I can't do that. Even though she's a guy, she and going to get married. I still still couldn't do it. No, no. Um... I think Wes Niles is a bit of a sort. He is. Yeah. Now he's like a little rapper. I know. I actually, I actually had a really embarrassing moment with him before he was on the island. Why? Before? Yeah. Before you were on the no, island. Before I was. Okay. Before I was. Spilt. Oh. <laughs> so I was basically, it was the drag after party in the club. And me and my friend was drinking. And I did get a bit too drunk. And um, he come over, whatever, chatting. And uh, he gave her this hair spray. Like, not, no, this um body spray. And because I was so drunk, and you know, you get paranoid that you like your breath stinks of alcohol. Yeah. I sprayed it into my mouth. What was it? Sorry. It was Tom Ford. Oh. <laughs> 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 and I sprayed it into my mouth thinking it was breath spray. Oh. Uh, and, uh, oh, no. 
It's worse than the spag ball. <laughs> yeah, it was a, it was a good. He is so, as well. Yeah, He's I do really think fit. it's a bit of a sort. So I'd probably say Wes. Although I can't tell you who's worse out of him and Jake because he was a little shit on Love Island. That's probably why I like him. Yeah. My time. <laughs> Love the bad boy. <laughs> um, so who is this is a great question. Who's the most famous person who has slid into your DMs? <laughs> I won't name names, but I've had Oh like... no, darling, darling, if you don't name names, you are eating blue cheese. <laughs> this is how the game works. You say the name, but you eat your blue cheese. Look, uh, I've had someone from the um a clue, a clue. I'll let you off. Right? Is is? I think every every girl gets it when she comes out of the room. But like a footballer, slid in. What um? What team did he play for? I think it was like Chelsea or, yeah. or something. But I didn't. I didn't respond because like I'm not really interested in like whether someone's a footballer and that. Like no. Me. I used to date people outside the public. Like I, I was so against dating someone in the public eye. Just yeah. like as a normal person outside the public eye, blah, blah, blah. But then the people that I have dated outside the public eye have got insecure or they haven't understood my lifestyle mm -hmm. or, or being in the industry. So now I am more open to dating people in the industry just in hopes that maybe they like get it. I don't understand why women date footballers. They are the biggest fuck boys ever. I mean, if you can mm. cheat on Cheryl Cole, oh my god, Cheryl Cole, you're gonna get cheated. I know. On. She is like a world there. She's literally was my idol growing up. She like, is stunning. I love. But her. I think I don't know what it is. I think sometimes people because obviously can't control themselves. No. So I just think it, you're not meant to be with someone, but mm. you don't want that. I, we don't stand for cheating. We here. do not stand no. for that. Um. Oh, fakest couple. From your season of Love Island. <laughs> I'm just evil laughing down the mic. <laughs> I'm not about the drama. A little bit. Oh, well, I suppose it was like towards the end, like. <laughs> <laughs> well, I suppose like the. Well, I, I do think everyone that was left at the time did have like a genuine connection in there. So. Based on me and Jake leaving, I'd have to say us because we wasn't... Oh, you little cop out. You were cop out. <laughs> we, wasn't, we wasn't together in the end, so we had to leave. We didn't yeah. fake it till we make it. Yeah. Like, we, we left, but I think we wasn't we wasn't right for, yeah, for at least it's a crazy week. Crazy though, I didn't work on Love Island, but people come out and I genuinely think they're made for each other and they split up. Like I... Reason being is I think... You're in there and you're in little love bubble. It's like a holiday road when you have the sun and you're spending 24 hours today together and then you come out and then you're in the real world. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, like you said, you're in the industry. Some people are doing better than others. And I think in partners, if your partner's doing better than you are, sometimes people can feel intimidated by that. And sometimes I think they need to look at, like, you can sometimes be stronger as a couple. Like, look at um, Alex and Olivia. Well, yeah, no, they've made I it love together. Them. Yeah, exactly. You know. They have made it together. I thought that that was going to be Liam and Miller. I genuinely... They're back together, and they? What? Have you not seen? I'm going to let you off with a question because that's drama. <laughs> we like it. No, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, no, I think they're back together. I think it's, it's news. Like, all the, they're back together, they each for it again. No, so I generally thought they were so much. So when they split up, I was shocked. But I was good. I, I thought they'd have been a power couple. Yeah. If, they still, if they're together, well, they're great, but... I think they're dating each other for again. So obviously... They've done some growing and... How can you not? Look at Millie, like... I know. Oh, my face. Like, yeah. shit, in real life as well, like, Millie and him literally like, look like a model couple. Yeah. They're literally like models. And the, I think the sooner, like, guys that come out of Love Island realise that they've got an absolute queen, yes. the better. Yeah, like, exactly. Like, um, Alex definitely thought that about Olivia, you know, like, they mm -hmm. are solid. So well, I think in there, they just look like, you can just know when people just suit like that, don't you? Yeah. And they are them people. And I think it's like me and them. Yeah. I was so sad with the Castle Law situation though. Like I was screaming at my TV. Mm. Like that was, it must've been different for you in there. Mm. But as a viewer, I couldn't believe it. I mm. couldn't believe. I genuinely thought it was going to go the way every other Castle Law has gone where he'll just, he'll just come back with Lily. But to sit there and pretend he's not done anything. I was like, I know. Well, obviously, I, I haven't watched it, but from that perspective, when they were like, has anyone got anyone to say? And like, obviously, like, Lil's was going... Did your brain go, it's Jake? Yeah. Did it? Yeah, naturally. Do you think everyone's did? Possibly. Yeah. Naturally, mine, mine did at the time, because although, like, he'd not given me a reason to doubt him at that point, like, being cheated on in the past, I just yeah. assumed the worst. So I was like, oh, my God, it's, it's, it's definitely me and him. Oh. But then, and as a viewer, we can see all of their faces and we yeah, can see Liam like this. Like, yeah, and I was literally like, 
No. No. Well, it, I was shocked. I was so shocked. Did you not think it was going to be Liam? No. 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 Wow. Not at all. Is it, is it, because obviously we get the music and stuff behind all, we get the edited version. Is it just as dramatic when you're in there? That was tense. That moment was very tense. Yeah. 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 Um, okay, next question. Um, the biggest Love Island secret you can spill? What's a secret people don't know? I know that people do videos about Love Island all the time. Yeah. yeah. But is there anything you think people don't know about? I'm just trying to think what you guys haven't wouldn't have heard already. Is the McDonald's thing true? Yeah. I'd go on just for that. But it's cold. Oh. It's not like, have they travelled with it? Yeah. Oh. It's cold, but it's, it's. I mean, it's nice still. Yeah. Um, I was just snacking constantly because I didn't know the time. So I'd, I'd like, apparently it would be up till that three. Is bizarre. Yeah, it would be up till three. And then I'd literally just be snacking all the way through because, like, we had dinner at seven. I didn't know if it was three o'clock in the morning. I didn't know, I have no concept at times. So I was just like eating the breadsticks like all the time. there on Love Island, like, can you see producers and cameras everywhere? No, I, I think some, maybe some previous seasons, like producers walk in or whatever. But because it was COVID, we just literally like, seeing our producers when it was dinner time because I'm just thinking about that video that went viral of the guy swimming in the pool and he was in a Love Island or apparently it was a producer I really <laughs> yeah. 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 so I just wondered whether it was like big I suppose or... I suppose like you don't maybe I can say you don't see people in the pool because you have to have your mic on all the time yeah so if you are chatting they'll say go to the size of the pool so they can hear what you're saying in the mic. And in like your full day sat on the day beds and stuff, like how often would you say you get told to go on out a chat? <sighs> in a we, day. I think oh, I had a very different experience to other people. I think some people got pulled out a lot and were like, would you like to go for a chat? Would you like to go for a chat? Genuinely hand in my heart, they didn't tell me to do much. And that's probably because I'm gonna bull and believed everyone that was yeah. to me. <laughs> so I literally I am gonna bull, so I probably they didn't have to do much because yeah. someone come up to me, oh, why don't you go have a chat with Lib and maybe talk about that? And I'd be like, Oh my god, you think that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm just a reactive person like that, so that. maybe that's why. What was your biggest shock then? Like when you went on and you've watched other seasons. Have you watched other seasons? Yeah. Like, I have, yeah. And then when you went on, you were like, Oh my god, I didn't know they did this. Is mm -hmm. there any moments like that? I think I didn't know that there was like the voice of God in there. Like they call it the voice <laughs> of God. Love. Yeah, which was like the producer telling you, like, you know, stop doing this, do that, blah 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 blah. So I didn't, I didn't know that was a thing. And I think also like when you watch it, you don't see that. I know it sounds like you don't see the mics. Well, I didn't anyway. Like, do you forget you you're in there? Yeah, is it? It was like, a bit of a shock, like wearing a mic and then having to change it every few hours. Because like, when I'm watching it, I'm watching the people. I don't, you don't cock on to the little things like having a microphone around your neck and all that jazz. Yeah. Do you get really used to the situation after about a week? Yeah, you do. Yeah. yeah. And like, you just... I, was, I forgot I was, on, I was on TV a lot. I know that sounds weird, but because the camera's a lot hidden and they're not in your face, it, like at a recoupling, they'll get a big camera out. But because obviously the cameras are hidden and not in your face, so like, I forgot I was on TV. Like, a lot of the time, a lot of the shots of me are literally me lying down like this. Yes, <laughs> I literally forgot. Yeah, I I think the recoupling seems intense. It seems like it yeah. was on for a long period yeah, that, of time. You don't you don't forget that you're on TV at that point because it's like right three to one. You stand up, say your speech. Yeah, and then that we always we always used to know when a recoupling was happening or something big was happening because you used to hear the big camera come round and like a cut like I don't know what it was. I don't know what big cut it was, but you could hear it. <laughs> oh my god! So yeah, right. Last couple of questions to round off. Um, best brand you've worked with? Oh, this is so hard. Um, well, personally, I've always loved Blue Avenue, so I love working. Yeah, with them. they're all about body confidence. Yeah, and I love Blue Avenue, but I actually Lola's lashes as a special place in my heart because they're like, yeah, they were just so lovely. The team there, and I'm just I love my eyelashes, and they were just a dream to work with. Oh, so no, they're nice. a special place. In my heart as well. And now I've put this one in there because I feel like it's going to get you to eat your food. <laughs> okay. <laughs> worst brand you've worked with there's not a bad brand i work with but there, there was there was a magazine that i did um a event for and yeah no, they just never paid us so they said they were gonna pay us so we, we went down spent the day there and yeah they just never gave us the money and that and it turns out they were like borderline bankrupt so <gasps> So there's nothing you can do then if they're no, saying the bankrupt. No. So yeah. Oh no. Um, you do, you've done really well not to eat that. I'm 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 proud. You know what? I felt like it was a matter of cheese or I was surprising <laughs> that morning. I know what? I, I was such like a random person. <laughs> cheese or sneeze. That's our idiot idiot. Is it? Brain. It is. Uh, 
But yeah, we, me and Liv, have, have, we think, I think I've got a lot oh, of ADHD. Yeah. I'm so scared. People have told me I have, oh, I'm scattered. I'm yeah. so scattered. Yeah. People like my brain goes from one thing to the other. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. My, like literally my energy says to me, you can never go and say, I went to the shop and bought milk. It's like, oh, no, no, and I did that. And then, yeah. And then, yeah. <laughs> that that is like, so I know. I could never just go to the shop and buy milk because something no. else would catch my eye. Yes. Or I'd do Sorry. something else, or I'd see something, or I'd fall over, or... Yeah, same. So last question from that game is, if you could change one thing about Love Island, what would it be? Is it in general or my Love Island experience? Just anything about Love Island. More food selection. Really? Yeah. See, my Britain, you get this big buffet. We do get a buffet, <laughs> but it was very much like fish salad every lunch. Oh, like, yeah. Right. Or oh, we'd wake up and then like have curry for breakfast. No. Yeah. No. Well, it'd be breakfast for me, but there'd be like curry out for breakfast. Oh, no. Uh, no. That's not a bit of me. Not a vibe. Um, right. So moving on from Love Island a little bit, you went on another really big show. Yeah. Dancing on ice. Yeah. Are you a dancer? No. No? No. Well, I mean, <laughs> in the club. No, like, I am now. I can do a bit both, so I can do like a bit of goofiness, so like breaking the shoulder. Yeah. It's one of my signature moves. I like so, that. Breaking the knee. <laughs> bit of that. Just, just slide. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to love that. Yeah. That's the so, thing. Yeah. Or I can do a bit of like hair whip, you know. Yeah. But professional dancing? How no. So how did you feel when they approached you and said another opportunity yeah so i always wanted to do that show because me and my mom like watched it from when i was young you for you oh it was like a dream come true like me and my mom always used to be on the sofa just me and her watching that show so it was like a childhood thing for me Aww. so i actually wrote it on a piece of paper before i went in and like obviously my management sat me down and was like you know we don't know how it's gonna go but if it did go well for you what would you want to do and i actually wrote it down on a piece of paper and it come true oh do you feel like you manifested it I don't know. I think I think some things are just meant for meant you. Meant to be. I, yeah. I think Noel, it was a little treat for me, and yeah. I was grateful to do it. But Moya was so hard because there was like three professional dancers, Moya, oh. and um, yeah, like they all knew how to point their toes. I couldn't. They were very flexible. I can get my leg up to about there, Maya B. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is not far, guys. No, <laughs> no, I, I'm not at all. <laughs> But yeah, don't so how would you sum up? <laughs> Joking. <laughs> how would you sum up your whole dancing on ice experience? It was definitely out like my comfort zone, but I think like now I've done that, I can do anything because literally like you're on live TV, getting dressed up in all these crazy outfits, and you've got like a week to learn your routine. Is that one of the best bits though? The outfits that they pick out for you? Is yeah, that, I that... mean, I think with me because I knew I'm quite out there. They put me in out there outfits. Yeah, so, like. I think I don't think I think I'm probably the only person in the whole world that can say I've been dressed up as a zebra on national TV. <laughs> genuinely I dancing about that. Dancing to I like the move, move it, move it. I think I genuinely I'm the only person in the whole world that could probably say that. So I mean that's you that's, know, girl. That's going on the TV. <laughs> you had a big fall, didn't you? Oh um, so what that. what happened was it wasn't like a proper like face plant fall. Um my my dancing partner, we'd done the lift a hundred times and that just shows how unpredictable the show is because we'd done it a hundred times and it never, ever gone wrong. But on the live performance, he went to pick me up and he lost a bit of his foot in, so he dropped me. So this was a bit controversial, wasn't it? I I do a little bit of my research before because yeah. I'm not, I've never really watched dancing. Yeah. So I did my little bit of research and it did say a lot of people, <laughs> do happens to my voice then, a lot of people were saying she shouldn't have been booted out. Yeah. Like there was forums for it. I, oh, so really? Oh, yeah, there was like, <laughs> who thinks Liberty should have stayed in Dunstan and Ice? <laughs> that is so nice. No, I think mm. it would have been nice to have a couple weeks on there. But like, how long were you in there? So I was in there, I think I did like four performances. So I think I was like week five and the show goes on for 10 weeks. So I guess about halfway. It's not bad. No, no, it's not bad at all. It would have been nice to have a couple more weeks on there. But I think... It's like I sympathise with like Ekin Sue and that when she went on because she's doing so much and stuff and you're training. I feel like as much as you want to enjoy the full experience, you've got that much going on around you as well that you can't put your all into Feel it. like after Love Island, you get asked to go on dance on ice quite quick. Yeah, it's and I think it's just you've got so much brand deals and, and everything that it's just hard to balance everything. And like, like me, like I was a young girl, I was still trying to see my friends as much as I could and... I was doing everything and I was I was a bit run down because of it. So, yeah. Uh, would you go on again? Oh, yeah. Well, I don't know, actually. 
<laughs> it was a really nerve wracking experience. I think I'm glad I did it. Don't regret it at all. Like I think it's something that I wanted to do. It was it was a dream. But I think even having that break, like because obviously I come back for the final to do one last performance. Even having that break of that time away, I got scared again doing all this mad stuff on the ice. I think when you're in the momentum of it, you yeah. believe you can do all these amazing things. What's the training process like? Is it is it hardcore? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like you're training like. I think it's pretty much like four days a week. I think you get one day off for like two months right up until the show. And then you're training Saturdays, Sundays, like you get one day off and like, yeah, you have to learn like this routine and you're training up and it's non-stop. Yeah, because it's one thing learning how to like ice skate and balance, mm -hmm. but you've got to dance on top of that. And, and remember all the moves. What and... was your favourite um, dance that you did? Was Shout out to my ex. Yes. The red one, because that was just so me. Like I love wearing red and my hair was long. My hair was like this actually, like how it is now. Like, love the half up, half down the song. And I'd practiced that one for two months. So I was pretty, it's pretty all right, that one. Yeah. And then it went down. <laughs> <wasn't> it? <laughs> and then, yeah, and it went from like having two months to learn it to like one week. I was like, oh. Was that hard? Having yeah. Having to learn a routine? Yeah. Because you're doing constant new moves and like, I'm not a professional. Like, and, like, I think once you get your basics of ice skating and if you like, like you're a professional dancer, you can make it look amazing. But because I had knew that. Like they always just say, you need to point your toes and straighten your legs out. And I was like, I can't. But I you know what? Can't. That just goes to show that you're a normal girl who can't dance because I cannot yeah. dance. Well, I can go on the show. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. You don't have to be professional. No, exactly. I just, I still enjoyed myself. And like I said, it really pushed me out of my comfort zone. Like I was speaking to Sally off career because she was on it. She's one of the nicest humans I've she ever is. met. I met her at Corrie. She's yeah, yeah. So she's literally so one of the me. nicest humans you'll ever meet. And not me and her were saying, like, she said, I've done a lot of stuff like acting or this and that. And she, But we both said, like, once you've done this, you can do anything. Like, you really do feel like that because it is nerve wracking. But yeah. Oh, amazing. Mm. So Love Island and Dancing on Ash, you've got two great experiences. You can yes. do them both again. Learn yeah. curves. Yeah. Amazing. Definitely grew me as a person. Yeah. In different ways, both of them. I love that. Um, so moving on a little bit to kind of why I asked you to be a guest because I just absolutely love the girl confidence, the body confidence, just your aura is amazing. Oh, thank you. Um, I would like to ask a little bit about your dating, dating life. How's that going? Because uh... <laughs> <laughs> mine's all right now, actually, but when I first started TikTok, like, absolutely shocking. That's where the, if his name starts with J came from, my ex started yeah. with J as well. How is you that? Want, you want the tea? I want the tea. Right. Are we going through the timeline since I left Love Island? Yeah, and I won't make you eat blue cheese. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> so I dated one person since leaving the show properly. Um, and I've got PTSD from that. Oh, I feel like I've been for Jake part two. Um, no offence, but yeah. <laughs> so he basically was, I'm really into tradesmen. I'm Ooh. really, I'm really into tradesmen. Um, they are handy, aren't they? They are handy, ma'am. <laughs> But then, like, I don't want to be stereotypical, but I feel like they've got the chat and all this, and then they're quite often very little laddie. And they have a wondering eye as well. Oh. So, yeah, that, and it all moved very fast. Like, I felt like I was in the violent part two. Like, it was, I love you within two weeks and all very quick. And then I went to LA and then, um, yeah, it just basically switched up and, and changed. But I think for me, being in the public eye, like, there was an, like, we'd only been dating for two weeks and then, like, an article come out. Oh. And I was like, hang on, we've literally dated for two weeks. How has how has an article come out here? Oh. So I was like, that put me off a bit. And then I went. Do you genuinely think it was it was him with the him always my share, hundred percent. So that that put me off. And I think for me, like to this day, I'll still get people come up to me like, was she dating so and so from the area and that? And I'm thinking, you've At obviously like mouths mouthed off about it so for me that that put me off so yeah. I didn't date anyone for ages and then I've been on little dates here and there but for me like I think that just fully put me off because it just might you question like who can I trust and who can I, can I not trust because yeah. I so wanted like that normal lad but then yeah and also every guy that I go for like they've got a weird thing with a family member what do you mean <laughs> what do you mean <laughs> So, like, Still. so for example, like, guys that I've dated in the past, like, they've been like, oh, yeah, wear your hair like that. Like, my mum wears oh, her hair like that. Look, like, it's sexy. Oh, no. Or, like, someone's auntie that I dated, like, told me that they taught him how to kiss. Oh. And, like, it was a bit weird. That is, like, top level it. Yeah. Top level. So, it's like, it just gives me a bit of the XO run for the hills. 
yeah. yeah. Even without PTSD, your PTSD, like, that is not... I know, I know. So, yeah, I think it was just, yeah. I, think I feel I, weird. I just want someone to see me for me and, like, get me and get... And not just see the banter side or the outgoing side or that's liberty from love on. And, like, I want people to see my depth and, and have them deep conversations. How easy do you think that's going to be? Because you can't reverse it and come I out. I like it when people don't know who I am. Like... But then what, what What when they find out who you are? Because there's always that then, isn't yeah. there? They don't know who you are. I yeah, I think if someone's genuine, like, for example, like, I'm not I'm not dating anyone, like, I am single. But, like, a guy that I spoke to recently, he didn't know who I was. And then he just liked me for me. And then when he found out, he didn't treat me any different. I love, I love like, that. Like, yeah, like, it just felt like he just seen me. And it, it weren't just about the band. Like, he was interested in everything I have to say. And I have a lot to say. Yeah. <laughs> like, I actually don't show up. So sometimes that can annoy people because it's like, am I going to get a word in edgewise? But, no, like, nice. but like, the fact that he could, yeah, like he understood me, it was nice. But I don't know. And did his name me. start with J? No. <gasps> there it is. No, it didn't start with J. I think you need to avoid J's, avoid tradesmen. Yeah. Avoid that wandering eye. Avoid the wandering eye. There's yeah. nothing worse than being cheated on in this world. No, it is. Have Awful. you been there as well? I've been there, yeah. Yeah, it and is hard. You know, I was very much like you, whirlwind. I did end up going back with him as well, which was, I know. <gasps> no, how bad? Yeah, have I you have never done that? Time. No, I have done that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I, love, I, I, think, I think because <laughs> because I've done it once before, I would never do it I would again. never do it again. You learn from Yeah, you learn and you put up with it. And I think I know people that... We'll just go back with their ex again, again, again. A leopard never changes its Yeah, past. that phrase no, around for Yeah, but you end up to the point where you have no respect left for yourself because you just put up with anything. And I just think that's a horrible place mm. to be. So I would never go back to that again. My cheating story was horrific. I was like you. It was a whirlwind. It was all very quick. Really, really loved him. And then I got a text message on Valentine's Day and she said, um, oh, just let you know he was with me three days ago. And I was like... Whoa. It's so annoying. I literally went on. I went to holiday for two weeks, and I literally stayed loyal. But people were putting things in his head. But I literally stayed loyal, and like I was looking forward to seeing him. And I found out as I was in the plane in the air on the way home, he was kissing the birds in the club. Oh, it's so annoying. Is that before Love Island? After, after. Yeah. So you do you feel like you're quite unlucky in love? Uh. I mean, I, I, I was like, damn, so, the one in the changing room, and Luke was like, why? <laughs> Can you please tell me how? <laughs> yeah, it was like that actually. So because I just like to, look, I want, I want to fact check. Yeah, I, want sure. fa I need to fact check. I need to fact check on something's not going well. How do you know that they're the one? That's what I was thinking. Yeah, because yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I she lies. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I found the one yet. I'm very optimistic now. Are you so be, young? I'm 28. This is what I mean. I think even if I found the one, they have to understand that my career comes first because. My mum was a single parent and I was seeing the struggle she went through. So for me, that like, I will never, ever rely on a man, ever. So for me, I want to make sure my career's sorted, my path sorted, you know, what I'm doing and that I'm, you know, on a stronger path. I feel like that was meant to be for you because I feel like lots of Love Islanders come out of the show and, and they've met their couple and they yeah. were, you know, Molly May, yeah. Alex and Olivia. Um, but that wasn't, that wasn't that was a me. And I think because of my upbringing, like it happened in the best way it could because now... I just know that I'm I'm me, and whoever's coming into my life is gonna is gonna add to that. Look, I wouldn't care if the guy I was with literally busked for a living, and that's not a bad job, by the way. But I'm just <laughs> saying, like, you know, I think people that when you're in the public eye, people expect you to be with these like lavish footballers or this and that. But I generally wouldn't care what job like my boyfriend had because I would choose love over yeah. money, and also I would be in such a good position myself because I would get myself where I want to be. That it generally doesn't matter to me. I want to be my own CEO and then have love over relying on a guy for money. Yes. Yeah. Build your own empire. Yes, exactly. And then he can come into the empire if he's worthy. If it's worthy. Yes. Yeah. Hundred percent. Um. So to round off, we've got a little um, little spin the wheel to to finish off with. But the one thing I wanted to. I was drinking you again now. I was like, you are popular. <laughs> oh, um, no one calls me. No one's the wrong points. This happens. Um, before my little spin the wheel, the last question I wanted to ask you was, um, so I have a huge variety of different ages of girls following me. I've got mums because of my princess stuff. I've got young girls. Um, lots and lots of ages. What is the number one advice? Could be about your body. It could be about boys. It could be just life advice. Would you give to young girls or women in general? 
I was like, I think growing up, you get a lot of people make comments about you or underestimate you or be mean to you at school. And and still in older life, like, like people can be catty. Mm -hmm. But what I'll just say, if, if someone is being mean to you, don't let that opinion affect you because quite often people pick on people because of their own insecurities deep within. So I always say, if someone's being horrible is a reflection on them. One thousand And they see something in you that they don't like about themselves and it's the proje it's projection. So if anyone is being horrible, do not take that to heart. And I know yeah. that because sometimes if I've had like an internal thought about what someone's wearing or their hair or anything, mm. it's usually because I'm thinking about my own. Yeah, well, I'm wearing on my hair or my weight. Like yeah. I'm thinking about that. So I know that that's true. hundred percent. Okay. To finish off, got a little new spin the wheel. You're going to be the first person to try Ooh, it. I love it. So all you've got to do is spin the wheel and then whatever number it lands on, I have a random question. It literally could be anything. Okay. You've just got to try and answer it. Interesting. So okay. spin the wheel, Liberty. <laughs> Very aggressive way. No, <laughs> Is that number? Was that number five? Yes, I know. One, two, three, four, five. One second. Oh my god, I've not heard that nursery rhyme in a long mm. time. Okay, number five. This is so cute, by the way. This whole setup, I love it. Thank you. This is so cute. You fit right. It's like the wax melt. Do you actually like hands have not noticed them? They're so cute. So just sniffing the wax of the spark. <laughs> Isn't okay, that? question number five, a random question. If you could have dinner with one person from the past, who would it be? I mean, I know who this is. Marilyn Monroe. <gasps> oh, my God. I, 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 do, I thought you meant my past is <laughs> in my life. Is it my life? Jake. That's good. <laughs> yeah. No, I would talk to Marilyn Monroe because she is actually my idol. I love her. I've got pictures of her everywhere and I just love how she's curvy. Yeah, She was an icon and she didn't need a man to be an icon because she no, was like, an icon in her own anybody's one. Anybody's like comparing to that yeah. uh, in this era. Yeah. She was a one of a kind. She was one of a kind. And I just love everything she stood for. Yeah. yeah. And I just... When I used to be a blonde bombshell, I just love her. And I actually live off one of Marilyn Monroe's quotes, which is, it. you either give up or give it all you got. <gasps> Marilyn Monroe said that, and I live off that quote. You either give up or give it all you've got. Oh, I absolutely love I love that. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You are, You. I feel like you're going to be one of my favourite guests. You've oh, seen thank bad. You. So you. down to earth, so amazing. And um, the last thing is, what's next for you? <laughs> well... Oh. Some exciting stuff in the pipeline, um, can't share. <gasps> but it's yeah, secret. I think now that, you know, I know the route I'm going in, can only go up from here. It's, it's opening. Exactly. It's opening your mind. Yeah. It? I'm just working on my platform, getting that to where I want to be. And yeah, it's very exciting. exciting. Me and Lib have the same management. I'm hoping I get to go on a girl's trip with you. Yeah. yeah. It's so It'd be fun. fun. It'd be yeah. a vibe. Yeah. It would be amazing. But thank you so much Thanks for coming so much on. Thanks for having me. It's been amazing. And thank you so much for listening, guys. See you for the next step. Yay!